All right, everyone, you know what time it is. It's top tier time. That's right, it's the best of the best of the best. The characters with serious meta dominance and the ability to take tournaments left and right. In this part of the list, we spend most of our time talking about why these characters are so good and what results they have to prove it. Now remember that our tier lists do not order the characters within the tier, so think that all of the characters today are all roughly equivalent within top tier. We're not saying the ones at the beginning or the end of the video are necessarily better than the rest. But don't go thinking that any of these characters are unbeatable. There's no Street Fighter 2 Akuma in here. There might not even be a Tekken 7 Akuma in here. You'll find that the right player can make a top tier look invincible at times, but plenty of high tiers and mid tiers can match them too. The top tiers are just characters that win with consistency and have more obvious strengths. Not totally OP picks you'll need to succeed, this is not Smash 4. And one player in particular that makes his characters look invincible is MKLeo. And guess what, you can get the secrets on improving at Smash right from MKLeo himself at ProGuides.com. Click the link in the description to check out our website for tons of advanced guides on Smash Ultimate as well as a personal pro course by MKLeo himself. You definitely do not want to miss that, but for now, let's finish up our tier list. Speaking of Smash 4, our first top tier is Bayonetta. Kidding, kidding. But our first top tier is a DLC character that kind of looks like he is related to Bayonetta. That's right, it's Joker. Last time we made this list, we asked is Joker great or is MKLeo making him look great? Most of the community wondered that too. Now it looks settled. Sure, MKLeo is great, but Joker is a legit top tier and other players are showing it too. In Japan, AIM, Sue, and Rain have picked him up and got him results. In North America, lots of players have given him a try as a main or secondary and done well. It's easy to see why. Joker is a fast and dangerous character with so many tools at his disposal. His aerials are great for edgeguarding, his rebels guard is great against range and even for recovery. His falling aerials can set up so many kills, and boy does he have combos. He's kind of like the rushdown character to end all rushdown characters. He does have a few bad matchups and can feel weak without Arsene, but there's a reason so many pros pick him over so many other characters. Continuing on with rushdown characters, Inkling is another balanced rushdown kind of character. Inkling can combo and use their speed and low profile to get up close to opponents and open them up with grabs and well-spaced aerials and tilts. However, Inkling can also play range and control the stage a little using the Splat Bomb. The Inklings also excel at edgeguarding and going deep off stage to kill someone with probably one of the best back airs in the game. They're top tier at ledge trapping too since their splat bomb is so versatile. Inklings pretty much got it covered on all fronts and has good defensive options too. Inkling can struggle to get a kill though, since up throw up air setups only work within a small window for a lot of characters and they don't get those fancy drag down setups the Joker gets. Inkling might not be living up to the absolutely insane hype the character had at the start of the game, but Inkling stays in top tier because they're one of the most versatile characters out there. After all, what other character lets you play as both a kid and a squid? Speaking of versatile rushdown characters, do you resonate more with fruits or flowers? No matter your choice, Peach and Daisy make for some of the most outstanding rushdown top tiers in the game. They've stayed S tier for most of Ultimate's meta and there's no reason to change now, especially with Samsora finally winning a major. What makes the princesses so good? It's a lot of damage, a lot of strings, a lot of edgeguarding, a lot of mobility, and a great projectile to top it all off. Peaches are a feature of pretty much any bracket. They're everywhere and they're doing well. Peach is light, but that's really the character's main weakness. Other than that, this character is such an obvious top tier that most of the Smash community actually agrees she's a top tier. Huh, I guess there really is a first time for everything. The zoner equivalent of Peach is probably Snake. Tons of people at all different levels of the competition love this character. You see him in top 32, top 16, top 8, and he might just be the best zoner in the game. Snake has an insanely good neutral game and an ability to shut off whole sections of the stage. He may have the best ledge trapping in the game and the best options out of shield. His kill potential is up there too. However, Snake has trouble winning majors these days. That's mostly because he has a hard time landing and the other top tiers really take advantage of that. So many other top tiers are either rushdown characters or characters with very good neutral. Snake is a character that has barely any losing matchups, but also doesn't have a ton of matchups he wins super hard in the top tiers. So you do see Snakes lose and win against lots of characters. 
It would make him tough to rank, if he weren't such a popular character with such obviously good tools and players behind him. Nowadays, he's a pretty clear top tier. Though, Snake might not be the only zoner, Palutena can zone too. But at the high level, Palutena is more about combos and aerial pressure than about landing explosive flames. Palutena is just good all around and one of the most frustrating characters to fight in Ultimate. I mean seriously, just search Palutena on Twitter and you've got enough sodium to open a Slim Jim franchise. Palutena is so frustrating because she's... She, she's so good, and because she has so many multi-hits that it feels like you're in hit stun for days. God, I'm getting mad just thinking about this. This character has a good tool for just about every situation and has some great hitboxes. Palutena doesn't have much trouble in neutral or advantage, and has some good tools to get out of disadvantage too. Her main weakness is when she's really on the back foot, getting comboed or harassed, but she makes up for that with everything else, and ends up being another popular top tier. Palus are pretty much everywhere! Thanks, Snyro! If there's another good all-around character with tons of mains, it's Wolf O'Donnell. Wolf is looking a bit rough after nerfs and meta changes, and even more with Zachary and Tweak dropping him. That means no top 10 players focusing on him. But that doesn't mean Wolf isn't the strongest Irish character to ever set foot in Smash. Wolf still has an all-around great kit, and very few bad moves. Most of Wolf's moves have disjoints on the level of the sorties, on top of reliable combos and kill setups. And there are players still making the most of that kit, like Larry Lur, Jackal, Komarakiri, and Wizrobe, whenever he decides to play Ultimate. So Wolf did drop off a little, but not out of top tier. It's more like he dropped from being one of the three most picked and most hyped characters to one of the ten most picked and hyped characters. Still pretty good. It's a weird world where Fox isn't the most popular space animal right out of the gate, but honestly, he's always had close competition in between Falco and Wolf. In this game, the competition is as close as ever, with Wolf and Falco both being strong and popular picks. Of the three, Fox is the one that plays closest to the legacy of the species. That basically means he has super hype rushdown with tons of combos and tech chases. Fox has pretty much the same key strength he's had in every game, speed. This dude is an ace pilot, but he might be an Olympic sprinter too. Speed is super valuable in Ultimate and helps with pretty much everything, so Fox is in a good spot. His main problem is that he falls so fast that he's super easy to combo despite being a light character. That means Fox can lose stocks as quickly as he can take them. But he's got a lot of great options to bust out of trouble, like Neutral Air or Shine. That means Fox is surprisingly good at the comeback, as Light's shown us. So even though Wolf is doing well, Fox hasn't fallen out of step with his foil. And Fox is looking better as the meta advances and speed and falling aerials look even more valuable. In early Ultimate, Fox wasn't even the most iconic glass cannon in the game. That honor belonged to Pichu. When Pichu was strong, he was overwhelming in every sense. Tons of people played him at pretty much every level, and he might have gotten optimized faster than anyone else. With time, and with some big nerfs, this baby rat has fallen off a little. Like Wolf, it wasn't a fall from top tier as much as it was a fall from maybe the best character and you, your best friend, and your whole family mains him to just another top tier. Pichu still has insane kill potential and one of the best damage outputs in the game. This Pokemon is still a rushdown god, and players like Nakat and Black Twins are showing that. Now he's just riskier and easier to punish than he used to be. And up next, we've got his older counterpart, Pikachu. Pikachu is the more balanced of the electric mouse type Pokemon. Pikachu still has a lot of combo potential and likes to fight up close, but Pikachu can also use its Thunder Jolts more freely. That means Pikachu has a bit more zoning and range potential than Pichu and a more versatile neutral. Pikachu's up special also has a hitbox, giving it a great movement option. Despite being good in a lot of ways, Pikachu is surprisingly underplayed. But those that do play this Pokemon, mainly Esam and Captain L, have done very well. Pika's only big flaw is trouble killing opponents that have really good recoveries. Pika is a great edgeguarder, but lots of really good characters are hard to edgeguard. On stage, Pika relies on committal moves like a smash or dash attack to kill. Still, the character's raw speed and options make it a menace to most of the cast. Finally, it's the queen of the Fire Emblem franchise herself, Lucina. Lucina got an early reputation for being boring from pros that didn't like her style, and that hurt her player base and results. But if you watch Proto Banham and Mr. E, you know that Lucina is far from boring. This character brings the hype edge guards and those flashy melee Marth esque kills. In a game where so many characters have so many weird moves and options, Lucina looks plain at first glance. But she's such a good bread and butter sortie that she can be hype and good. 
Lucina is stronger than her Echo Fighter and her dad because she's got good things for all parts of her game. Her disjoints are great, making her pretty safe when spacing well. Her out of shield options are solid and her recovery is even better. Her base stats and frame data are good too. She's got moves that can poke, pressure shield, get kills, and start combos. Basically, she's every bit as awesome as she was in Awakening, even if she's every bit as by the book too. There's a chance that she gets muscled down the tiers by some other top tiers, but she's staying S tier for now. Alright, that's it for our 5.0 tier list. How do you think we did? Who would you put in your top tier? Where do you think Banjo and Kazooie are gonna end up in the future list as the meta advances? Let us know in the comments! We're always happy to hear from you guys. And remember, Smash isn't all about tier lists and being optimal. Sometimes, it's really about playing what's fun for you and what fits your playstyle. Believe it or not, enjoying the game can help you get better at it. And Ultimate is one of the best Smash games ever for just playing what you enjoy, because every character has so much potential. MK Leo told us himself that part of why he plays the characters he does is because he legitimately enjoys them and their games. And you can hear more about what MK Leo has to say on his pro course on ProGuides.com. So get out there and grind those matchups, and we'll see everybody again once Nintendo brings out the balance changes.